All right, so you can make your own timeline at home on a piece of paper or an index card. Um, remember the events related to the Western expansion led to the Civil War, um, like the Missouri Compromise, the Fugitive Slave Laws, the Annexation of Texas Compromise of 1850, the Kansas-Nebraska Act, and the Dred Scott decision all showed people how they had differences of opinion and that, that caused sectionalism to grow. So, on your timeline, all right, tensions you just write what's underlined. Tensions grew. Those tensions grew between people who wanted slavery and those who did not want slavery as new territories were added to the U.S. The ways of life in the North and South became more and more different. Uh, the South continued to be agricultural area and the North became more industrialized, meaning they had more factories. The South still depended on slave labor and the North were freeing their slaves. And then sectionalism grew. People in the South wanted states to have power to decide on slavery, and people in the North liked the power to be in the national government. So those are the things that led up to the Civil War. All right, so the Civil War timeline. In 1860, Lincoln was elected president. That's the first thing you want to add. Many in the South thought that he would end slavery. Also in 1860, South Carolina, and then six more, so to seven states, seceded from the Union. So you just need to put seven states secede from the Union to protect states' rights and their way of life. They became a new country, the Confederate States of America. They wrote a constitution and elected Jefferson Davis as president. So that all happened in 1860. And 1861 was the first battle, the Battle of Fort Sumter. Jefferson Davis ordered Confederate troops to fire on Union troops, starting the Civil War. After this battle, four more states seceded from the Union, now a total of 11. So 11 states. Now in 1863, so two years have passed, there's been several battles, um, many battles. We don't, we really only talk about three in fourth grade that are, that you need to remember, but um, another event that happened was the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, so add that to your timeline. That's when President Lincoln issued this order as Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. Armed Forces that freed the slaves in all states that had left the Union. The Confederacy, of course, did not obey the order, so the Union Army had to liberate the slaves. So if the Union Army had taken over uh, your city, they would free the slaves, but if you were still under the Confederate state, then you were still a slave. Also in 1863 was the Battle of Gettysburg. This was the turning point of the Civil War because the Confederate Army was so severely wounded that they could not invade the North. They could only fight a defensive war. So up until this point, many of the most of the battles, I think all of them, but maybe one, was fought in the Confederate states, and they were just defending, and they had done a good job. They had maybe lost a few where they had Confederates were winning, but the Battle of Gettysburg is where it really turned around, and the Union started winning more and more. After, also in 1863, the Gettysburg Address occurred. This is where President Lincoln gave his speech to dedicate part of the battlefield as a nation, national monument to honor the men who had died there on both sides. He reminded everyone that the Union and the democracy that the Union and democracy should be preserved or kept safe. And the Gettysburg Address is one of the most famous speeches in the history of the United States. And this was months later after the actual battle occurred because so many men um, had died on the battlefield or after from injuries or sickness. And then in 1865 was the surrender at Appomattox, and that is where Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to Union General Ulysses S. Grant at the Appomattox um, Courthouse. It's That's a town in Virginia. They signed the document, not in a courthouse, but in a farmhouse, but the city is called Appomattox Courthouse. I know it's a little confusing. Um, there were other battles in between Gettysburg and Appomattox, Vicksburg, um, was one big one, but really the only battles you have to know for fourth grade is Fort Sumter, and then Gettysburg, and then the surrender at the Appomattox, which was after a battle there too. Four days after the surrender at Appomattox, President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth, and that's a error there, um, at 
Ford Theater in Washington, D.C. So in 1865, just he saw that the Confederacy had fallen and John Wilkes Booth was still upset along with many others and they planned an assassination on Abraham Lincoln and others. As the news of the surrender of the Army of the of the Army of the Northern Virginia spread across the South, other armies of the South gave up too. So what that means is every state had their own army in the Confederacy, and Virginia was the first one to surrender. And then after they heard the news, you know, it took a long time to get news from place to place, then the other armies in other states also surrendered at different battlefields. And um, then we start with putting the Confederacy and the Union back together into the United States of America.